Guys are falling, guys, guys are falling, falling, guys are falling, guys, guys, guys. Guys are falling, guys, guys are falling, falling, guys are falling, guys, 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 guys are falling. Won't someone help them? They're falling to their death. Guys are falling, guys, guys, they're falling, falling, guys, they're falling, guys. I love guys. <laughs> There's one thing in life you can always count on. If something gets popular, it's gonna spawn some ripoffs. One day you have the angry video game nerd, and the next you have the cheap knockoff version. <laughs> Whoever that is must be pretty embarrassed right now. Instead of Nutella, there's Buttella. I'm more of a nut master guy, personally. What's your favorite flavor of Prongles? Well, whatever it is, you know we're gonna wash it down with some milk and some cream betweens. <laughs> Freaking cream betweens. <laughs> and the same is true with video games. For every Fall Guys phenomenon, you have the previously shown Guys Are Falling. Buried 53 pages down in the iPhone App Store. Most of the time, there's a reason they're that far down. But if I'm being honest, not every game that would be considered a ripoff is bad, necessarily. In fact, I have one game for this video that is definitely a clone of one of my favorite game franchises of of all time, and it's actually really cool. I'll be saving that one for the end, but in the meantime, I have to go. Garfield go. In 2016, Pokemon Go was insanely popular. It was played by hundreds of millions of people and it was the fastest mobile game to ever earn one billion dollars in revenue. So of course, there were plenty of ripoff versions with other popular IPs like Jurassic Park, Harry Potter, and uh, Garfield. You know, obviously. Gotta catch all the Garfields. Unfortunately, it seems like sometime in between when I came up with this video idea and now, you can no longer download Garfield Go. Aww. A tragic loss for everyone, I'm sure. Aww. So I'll have to get some footage off of YouTube, but I don't think it'll really matter that much. I think I think we can get the gist of it from footage from YouTube user... Review Top Games iOS. We'll be all right. So just like Pokemon Go, and I mean literally just like it, if you squint real hard and ignore the fact that there's a derpy looking Garfield walking around, you can barely even tell the difference. Instead of finding a Pokemon, you find a Garfield, and he says something hilarious. Diet is die with a T. It's funny cause he eats a lot. Garfield then points at this food that you have for some reason, and then you throw it at him. <laughs> If you miss, he gets really upset. Oh God! And if you get it into the bowl, he eats it. <coughs> and then he dies. Uh. Then Garfield gives you money. Meow. And a fedora. And then you keep doing that forever. Yes, I bought a fedora just for this. And it doesn't even fit. Because I have an abnormally large head. Thanks, Mom. My fedora doesn't fit because of you. And I almost forgot yeah. you can also unlock comics! It's funny cause he's fat! Up next I've got another Pokemon Go ripoff, but this time... This time I could actually download and play the game. Which I decided to do on the hottest day of the year. For some reason. Can you catch some zombies? Uh. Zombie Go are out there! And you need to find them! Uh. As you walk around a neighborhood, your smartphone will vibrate when there's an animal nearby. It's not working. That's it, I'm out of here. He's not working. Bye! In Zombie Go, instead of catching adorable Pokemon, you catch random zombie clip art pictures that the guy who made this game found on Google Image Search. All while the most generic, happy song in the entire world plays in the background. Obviously, I assumed this would be bad, and uh, 
It is. But you'd think they'd at least lean into the whole creepy monster zombie theme, right? Well, they didn't. Again, for a game that's supposed to be about zombies, the music is absolutely ridiculous. The image of my derpy little character slowly trotting towards death himself is pretty hilarious to me. But it's not just that. The game frequently refers to the zombies and monsters as creature, and again, animals? To make it seem even more like Pokemon, I guess? And it even gives them elemental types for some freaking reason. Step aside, Bulbasaur, there's a new character in town. El Coro! El Coro is a grass type creature. It likes to hop on tree leaves. He can't jump very high though, because his leg is broken, Ouch. and the rest of his brains will fall out. The actual catching of the zombies, or, uh, excuse me, animals, doesn't even work right. When you find one, it floats around while you flick these little random balls at it for a while until it just sends you back to the map. There's no indication whatsoever if you were successful or not, no sound effects or anything. At first I thought they were all getting away, but eventually I checked my encyclopedia thing and there were a couple of zombies in there, so it must have worked a couple of times. I don't think the actual ball throwing has anything to do with it though. They just want you to throw as many as possible so you'll buy more or watch an insanely loud ad that plays on top of the music so you can't even do it. But the fun doesn't stop when you catch them all. You also get to evolve your zombies. You know, evolving zombies. That's that's a thing, right? That's a thing that happens with zombies. And for only 1,000 of whatever these balls are. Apparently they're called magic dust. And it's uh... Thrilling. Did you see? It went from this one to this one. They're different. Unfortunately, I'm all out of magic dust balls. But don't sweat it! You can actually pay only $15 to make that happen two more times. What a deal! Pokemon Go, your time is coming to an end! You're on your you're on your deathbed! I mean just look at these raving user reviews. How? How can you catch the zombie? Five stars. Or from Jihai Hijex for Fig. I'm a biggest fan. I love it so much. Me. Everybody play with usual Pokemons, but I play with these cool zombies. I like. Even John Cena gave it five stars. The underscore John Cena. You know what? I'm starting to think that these reviews uh, might not be legitimate. Well, whatever. I've got a mobile game that's actually fun and has hundreds of thousands of actual five-star reviews and an actual Editor's Choice Award. No word on whether or not underscore John Cena approves of it, though. We're still waiting for that. And it just so happens to be the sponsor of this video. Funny how that works. Marvel Strike Force! Marvel Strike Force is a mobile squad RPG with an expanding roster of characters from across the Marvel multiverse. Create your own dream Marvel squad to complete missions and unlock gear, resources, and even compete in PvP battles. But it's not just heroes, you can even recruit villains, as well as characters inspired by Marvel Studios' Thor Love and Thunder. The Age of Apocalypse has arrived in Marvel Strike Force. Apocalypse is a very bad dude, is probably gonna do some really bad stuff, and I'm probably not going to be able to stop him by myself. I mean, I have been working out a little bit, but it's probably, you know, I'll, I'll let all that Marvel, the Marvel guys handle it. Luckily, during the Age of Apocalypse Scourge events, I can adjust the difficulty and customize the events to fit my team's strengths for added bonus challenge and more points. Also, luckily, I have Spider-Man on my team. So use my link in the description below, as well as in the pinned comment, to download Marvel Strike Forces for free and level up. And big thanks to Scopely for sponsoring this video. The original Tony Hawk Pro Skater games were pretty big back in the day when they first came out on the PlayStation N64 and my personal favorite, the Windows 6.5 mobile version. Heck, there was even a re-release on the iPhone, apparently. So naturally, other companies wanted in on that cash cow, one of those companies being Electronic Arts. Wait, EA? They, they would never! I don't believe it. I won't believe it. I won't believe that EA would possibly make the, Simp the Simpsons skateboarding. And then it wouldn't even be good. I don't believe that for a split. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was a PS2 exclusive. Look, I'm not saying it didn't have good games. It had a lot of good games, actually. But I do have one problem with the PS2, and that is mainly that it never works is just a little bit of a, a little bit of a problem. I've heard before that the PS2 Slim doesn't get the disc read error nearly as much, but I never bothered upgrading from my ginormous model. <sighs> oh. <Shh. laughs> 
<laughs> but after about an hour of PlayStation surgery, I was finally rewarded with... being aggressively waved at by the Simpsons family. Hello. You choose your character and... Whatever. That pretty much sums up how I feel about this. In fact, Homer is so apathetic about this whole situation that he's just straight up out. There he goes. Bye-bye. Not only is the gameplay exactly like Tony Hawk... Ah. Uh. Hi, Homer. He's back. But it also has the exact same objective system. The very first one being... Kid Catcher? Uh... Unlike Tony Hawk Pro Skater, though, the game is incredibly frustrating to control, and somebody decided that the mission timer that counts down needs a beat sound effect every second. Totally not annoying and stressful at all. Uh, actually, a pretty good idea, I think. I think I'm gonna start doing that with my videos now. Every second, you get a beep sound effect. There's one thing in life you can always count on. If something gets popular, it's gonna spawn somewhere else. Pretty cool. I like it. The gameplay is so frustrating, it actually makes the very first level pretty hard, so I only managed to beat one mission. And that mission was the formerly mentioned Catching the Kids. I guess they're now forced to aimlessly roam this parking lot for all eternity. I pretty much spent the rest of the time playing this game, making uh, inhumane noises and swearing. Oh my god! Huh? Ah! 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 What? Oh, God. I want to die. I want to die. Oh, my God. Oh, three, two, no. My cat is better than you are. I don't know what that means, but it's still somehow true. I think I've had about enough of this game. Let's do something else. All right. That's just about all I can take of the Simpsons skateboarding. But I do have another Tony Hawk Pro Skater ripoff. This time, Disney's Extreme Skate Adventure. And I know what you're thinking. Look at this box. Look at this weird kid. Look at Simba on a board, whatever that is, that doesn't even look like it has wheels on it. You're thinking this game must be just as bad, if not even worse, than the Simpsons skateboarding. No, oh, I'll, I'll, we'll talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> we start off not with Disney characters, but with real life children, apparently competing in some kind of contest to be a character in the game. And the whole thing is just about the most early 2000s thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> not him. Nope. Oh God, no, no way. Nice approach. No, oh, my, are you kidding me? Whoa, whoa, what, what are you waste my, you know, my neck on the did I go through the, all the way away? Wait, hold on. Go back to that other kid again. What is he doing? He's picking up speed. Don't tell me he's about to do the fable two palm 360. Oh, he's doing it. So apparently this kid made it into the game and then he blew up. Disney's Extreme Skate Adventure! Very few real life kids were blown up in the making of this video game. It's got all the classic Disney characters, creepy looking Woody, an elephant, Ryan. You know, it's a tough choice, but I think I'm gonna have to go with creepy looking Woody. Oh, hey everybody. You're probably wondering how I got the snake in my boot. Your next exercise is to collect the letters to spell skate. So, exactly like Tony Hawk. Got it. It emulates the Pro Skater games to a T. You skate around, do little quests for characters located around the level, and you unlock new levels, characters, and areas by doing baked bean plants. Is that a name of an actual skateboarding trick? Pretty shameless, but at least it does a good job of ripping it off, unlike the Simpsons version. Probably the best way I can put it is that Disney's Extreme Skateboard Adventure actually made me want to go back and play the old Tony Hawk games, whereas the Simpsons skateboarding 
kind of made me wonder if those games could have ever actually been good in the first place. I must have just been remembering it wrong. I don't really know why any of these characters are skating or even how in the case of characters like Simba, but the controls are way better and less frustrating. It didn't take long before I actually felt like I was pulling off some pretty sick moves. I've graduated past baked bean plants and now I'm pulling off some sauteed shallot seeds. Whoa, whoa. And even some fried fennel flaps. Draw me like one of your French girls. Oh. On top of that, all the levels feel distinct and are well themed based on the different movies and the game is full of references and jokes that Disney fans will likely enjoy. I especially dig the Toy Story Pizza Planet level. It even has the alien drink fountains. Alien slime, drink it all the time. You know what? I think I will drink it all the time. <sighs> I'm very susceptible to food advertisements. Oh my god. Is there vodka in this? <laughs> Ten. I've played other Simpsons games that have really great references to the show, like Hit and Run, a game that's often referred to as a GTA clone, by the way. Unfairly, in my opinion, I freaking love that game. But the Simpsons skateboarding? <sighs> I mean, I guess it has references. They're just not nearly as funny or interesting. Everybody remembers the famous kid catcher gag, right? Deploy the kid catcher. That's my favorite episode. But by far the best part of the game is just watching Woody wipe the f out. What? Who is that? Oh, come on, Woody. Oh. Failure. Alright! Oh my god. I'm awesome. <laughs> oh yeah, Woody! Oh yeah, baby! Ow! I broke my arm! I broke Woody's arm. That was legitness. Yeah. Something I didn't realize until much later after playing is that Activision actually bought out the original developers of Tony Hawk. So Disney's Extreme Skateboard Adventure was actually made on the exact same engine. And Neversoft, the original developer of Tony Hawk, also worked on this. Which, you know, probably explains why it's actually good. I'm pretty sure it even uses some of the exact same sound effects. I don't really feel like researching exactly how this deal went down, but it was probably something like this. Hey, you know that game you made? Why don't you make that, but put all of our stuff in it. No thanks. Here you go. Okay. I love you, money. Go Ryan! Go. It's your birthday! Go Ryan! It's your birthday! Alright, let's go to the next game. Also known as Shart. F yeah! Whenever you play Shart Kart, of course, you have to start on Forest Run. I mean, I guess. Three pigs a squealing? Is that a map? Wait, are they responding to my question? That's weird. If this looks familiar, it's because it's an exact clone of Mario Kart, specifically the GBA version of Mario Kart Super Circuit, which I used to play all the time as a kid. And I have to say, for a handheld game in the early 2000s, it really holds up. Even the graphics are still appealing, if you ask me. Shrek Shart, on the other hand, well, for starters, I can't even tell what character I'm playing. I think I'm a red balloon, maybe? All the sound effects are torture to listen to. 
I've been playing for about 13 seconds and I've heard this line about 30 times and I still have absolutely no idea who's saying it to me. The controls are just ridiculous. It's impossible to make almost any turn without drifting, but the more you drift, the faster you go to the point that it's impossible to control. And don't you dare hit another cart because it'll flip you straight backwards and it'll take you about five seconds to turn around to get going again. Or it might even just throw you straight off course. <laughs> Thank you, Blue Fairy Lady, but I don't actually want to respawn. I'd like to never breathe again. Can you can you provide that f for me? Is it, can you be a magic? Can I turn your magic into making it never breathe ever again? <laughs> Is that something you can do? I'm just wondering. But hey, at least it has Shrek. Shrek is funny, right? And it has, um, so many other great characters, too! Who, ask yourself, would rather play as Luigi or Mario when you could play as guy who cuts off people's heads or pixelated screaming man? <laughs> But me, I'd prefer to play as Shrek himself so I can hear his most iconic line from the film. Hey. Well, Shrek might not have what it takes to topple Mario's carding empire, but you know who might? Garfield. That's right, he's back. Garfield Kart! It has everything that made the Mario Kart series a smash hit with fans. Just none of it is anywhere near as good. It's got lovable characters. There's Garfield. <laughs> of course, there's everyone's seventh favorite person named John. <laughs> and you can't forget about Harry. Yeah. Harry? <laughs> Who the heck is Harry? Garfield's drug addict friend, I guess. <laughs> He's also a big fan of chicks, apparently. That's the only character attribute you need to know about him according to the game. It's got carts like the Woofmobile. You'd have to be pretty dumb to drive this one. Unless... First of all, I don't know what they mean by unless... What are you trying to tell me that driving this cart, which is one of the very few options available, would make me a complete moron, but this cart that's only marginally different is perfect for high speeds? What kind of sense does that make? And there's items, which are, of course, almost completely one-to-one -one the same as Mario Kart. Instead of shells, we've got pies, with the homing pie obviously being the red shell. For the star, there's perfume? Why? I don't know. I actually spent a decent amount of time thinking about it. Perfume is meant to be pleasing and even potentially attract people, whereas a star in Mario Kart uh, makes you invincible and kills people. I, I don't see. I don't see why the, it doesn't really make sense. I even Googled Garfield perfume to see if there was any kind of inside Garfield joke that I was missing, but nope. Doesn't seem to be the case. But I did find a picture of some Garfield perfume. It kind of looks like he's sitting on a toilet, which I guess would mean that you're supposed to spray Garfield's toilet water on yourself. I've always thought lightning was the most annoying Mario Kart item. Well, the Garfield version, the pillow is even worse. <laughs> Instead of being shrunk and driving slow, you get put to sleep, losing all control of yourself, usually swerving off the course completely, and then it takes five whole seconds to get back up and going again. And of course, we can't forget the mushroom, which in this game is the lasagna. This one makes sense at least, Garfield loves lasagna, I get it, but you gotta be careful using them, or any boost for that matter. Not only can you get launched off the course if you boost in the wrong place. <laughs> oh yeah, baby. Take this, Crawly! Wait, what? It didn't do anything. Okay, whatever. It can even happen if you use boosts that are laid out on the track itself. The game's placing traps for you. But also, if you make any contact with the wall while boosting even slightly, you can get slammed into it and you're stuck there for the duration. It even resets you most of the time, which makes it feel like they knew this was a problem, but they just never fixed it. Hopefully the star doesn't kill me again. Amanda, how freaking dare you do that? No! The walls are like black holes. They'll suck you in. It, 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 it usually restarts you when you get stuck like that. That time it didn't even bother. Another thing that happens in this game, another classic Garfield Kart moment, is that when you hit someone from behind, regardless of how fast you were going, it stops you instantly in your tracks. <laughs> You just straight up lose all momentum. The physics in general are just insane. 
And the resets sometimes just straight up don't work. No! How do you reverse? Sorry. <laughs> I think I just killed someone. Ooh! I lost items? And and I got reset all the way back here? Once you get used to the drifting mechanics and the somewhat quirkiness of the controls and you know, the multitude of glitches, it does become somewhat playable. It can even get somewhat competitive if you find enough people with low enough standards to play it with you. But is it good though? No. Absolutely not. But by far the most fun I had with it was making everyone play as John. This is John Cart. Stop right there, criminal scum! John Card, yeah! Wait, am I going? I'm. Um, what? Why did we all go this way? Why did we all go this way? Oh my god! Uh, we actually need to change the Simpsons intro. Um. Huh? Hey, get out of my way! It's road rage. The Simpsons Road Rage. <laughs> what, you didn't like that? <laughs> the Simpsons doesn't exactly have the best track record when it comes to games. Well, um, I'm sad to say that The Simpsons Road Rage is really uh, not good either. Have you ever heard of Crazy Taxi? Crazy Taxi! Yeah, what he said. Well, that's all this game is. Except instead of this guy with 10 pack abs, we get this disturbing looking Bart Simpson. In fact, this was such a big Crazy Taxi ripoff that Sega, the creators of Crazy Taxi, actually sued EA, Fox, and Radical Entertainment for it. And while I'm not a legal expert per se, I did win first place in the Crazy Taxi portion of a video game tournament in 2010. So I think I'm qualified to look at that in a Wikipedia and read it back to you in a YouTube video as if it was information I knew off the top of my head. The game starts off with a fairly lackluster cutscene, but it does have at least one good joke in it. Behold the Burns Atomic Megabus. Faster, cheaper, and completely safe. Please kill me. That poor man. I hope someone does kill him. Okay. Basically, Mr. Burns has taken over the city's public transportation system, so Homer and the other Simpsons characters decide they'll start their own taxi business to stick it to the man. And that's pretty much it. Simpsons Crazy Taxi. It's even got the little directional arrow at the top. It's fine, if you have really, really low standards. Although admittedly, I did have a decent amount of fun with the free drive mode where you can, uh, you know. <laughs> drive peacefully and explore Springfield. I feel bad about myself. No, I don't. I think the developers of Road Rage, Radical Entertainment, also realized that the most fun thing about the game was driving around and hitting people because their next Simpsons game, the aforementioned Hit and Run, was almost exclusively driving around and hitting people. I hit this one guy so many times that I think he died? Is he... Is he gonna get up? <laughs> I think he's dead. How far is he gonna go? Is he gonna keep going forever? <laughs> oh my god, he's still going. He's still going. <laughs> oh, what happened? Bye-bye. I've heard some people saying that Among Us is the best Among Us game. Wow, imagine being so wrong about something on the internet.com. The best Among Us game is without a doubt. Among. Among. Among Us. <laughs> I've got sussies and bacos aplenty. I've got memes of a mogus galore. You want nuggets? <laughs> I've got 20. But who cares? I want more. I want to be where the booty is. I want to see, see I'm running. I want to lick the 
What do you call it? Oh. Crack. Up where they walk. Up where they run. Up where they've got a d**k in their bum. Stop! We can't put this on YouTube. What kind of degenerates are watching this channel? Ow. Ah, uh, shut up. Oh, please stop. Ah, uh, stop it. Please, please don't. The last game I have for this video is an obscure DS game called Magician's Quest Mysterious Times. The first game in a series that's often seen as simply a clone of Animal Crossing. I actually didn't realize until recently that this game series, which currently has four entries, three including this one on the DS, and then one on the 3DS, actually has a pretty big cult following online? Or at least a dedicated cult following anyway. Especially this one in the US, since it was the only one that was ever translated. And you know what? I get it. There's plenty of things that I like that are are less popular versions of something else. I think it's something that I can totally relate to, and I honestly kind of even respect it. But it's still a ripoff. Like, let's be real. But before any of you Magician's Quest fans dislike this video, <laughs> hear me out. I actually like this game a lot. It's a ripoff. But I do like it. When I first played it about four or five years ago, I also kind of dismissed it as little more than a knockoff. But having played it much more extensively now, there's a lot more to the game than just a clone of the popular Nintendo franchise. I mean, the comparisons, especially with the DS version Animal Crossing Wild World, are pretty hard to look past. You live in a village filled with mostly cutesy animal neighbors. You have a room that you decorate with furniture you find in your town, which has weeds and flowers and bugs and fish and a place to donate the bugs and fish and a furniture shop, and a barber shop. Oh, and did I mention the graphics are identical? You probably didn't even need me to mention that one. Heck, even the character voices sound the same. Oh, hey, I got you something. It's a lawsuit. Magician's Quest isn't just Animal Crossing, it's Animal Crossing meets Harry Potter. Yes, you heard that right. We're going to magic school. But before we get into any of that, first we have to create our character. Magical Girl Peepington. She's not exactly the best student in the world. Peepington! <laughs> For one thing, she's not very smart. Uh, what? But she also has a bit of uh, hyperactivity disorder. <laughs> And now that we've got our character, we're ready to start our new life as a magical girl by going through this big door like we're in some sort of Resident Evil game. At my old school, we were never allowed to kick some zombie ass. We've got an empty room, an empty spell book, and an empty brain. But we can certainly fix those first two things. We meet the weird son principal whose name is just School Principal. Some real doctor from Harvest Moon Friends of Mineral Town vibes. We get our wand and then we meet our classmates. Like Grace here, who Magical Girl Peepington is quickly growing close to. We are best friends. Inseparable. Two peas in a pod. She is a whatever. A banshee. Apparently, and I'm an old woman. <sighs> oh yeah, I forgot to mention that I bought this stunning old lady mask. This is how I've always felt on the inside, and now it's finally represented on the outside. I've become the true me. I spent literally all the money I made buying this outfit. <laughs> and I don't know how to make any more money. And then there's a robot. A robot named TV20C. He keeps passing me love letters during class. I think he might have a crush on me. I'm about to be on one of those strange attraction shows where somebody's sexually attracted to an inanimate object. <laughs> There's actually a lot of weird characters, both villagers as well as professors and shop owners. And it's one of the things I like the most about it when compared to Animal Crossing. There's this guy who owns the furniture shop. He's a light bulb, I think? A light bulb with arms and legs? He also sells brooms that you can actually ride, which is pretty sweet. This is my trusty mount, Vacuum. It's just a vacuum cleaner. There's this girl that you summon in the bathroom toilet stall by using a spell called Incantation Playgirl Toilet. I don't think we actually cast a spell. I think we just opened the door while she was taking a sh well, it's me, princess. 
but probably my favorite non-villager character is Vivian. I mean, just look at this lady. She's the owner of the clothes shop and she's a sentient mannequin on wheels. I love it. Sure, Animal Crossing has some strange villager types too. It even has some robots. But all of them, including the robotic ones, look like animals and are categorized as such. But in this game, there's a mayonnaise. <laughs> Okay, after further inspection, he's apparently not a mayonnaise bottle. He's a traditional gourd, but in my headcanon, uh, he's a mayonnaise. So I'm just gonna pretend like he is. There's a lot of cutesy animal characters in this game too, and most of them look like they could have come straight out of Animal Crossing. But there's also this person. I hate them. And oh my God, how can I forget my favorite character in the game? An old flip phone. That's literally what his categorization is. She is a deer, he is a ferret, she is a bird, he is a cell phone. And I will not rest until I get him in my town. And there's even alien villagers, which is something I've literally always wanted to be in Animal Crossing. You know, you could get in a rocket ship with Captain and he could take you up to this space and you go, oh, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> And then you land in the moon and you get in there and there's like a little alien villager. He's like, oh, hello, welcome to my place. And then you dance around and have fun together. Come on, Nintendo. I'm gonna keep saying this in my videos until you do it. That's a threat. There's Marty who looks pretty sick. Then the one we got, unfortunately, Marsha. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Nowhere near as good. So your player name? How about that, eh? I'm so popular, boys literally throw themselves at me. They just can't help themselves. No! Nobody's gonna steal TV guy from me. Marsha, you're going down. This girl even had the nerve to spread rumors that I am an alien. She's freaking gaslighting me. But the thing that sets Magician's Quest apart from Animal Crossing the most is the whole magic school vibe. But it's not just an aesthetic, the game really does go all out with it. There's tons of different spells you can learn and even use in the game. If you found it fun to terrorize your villagers with a shovel or bug net like I did, just wait till you can cast spells on them. Spells like magic. TOILET PERFORMANCE! Oh no! What if I'm too smelly to get married now? That's a problem we can all relate to, I'm sure. Now I've got my villagers literally running away from me in fear! <laughs> but I have bad news. My robot boyfriend, TV20C, aka my co-star in Strange Attraction Season 9, Episode 14, has moved away. No! <laughs> Why? And it was all because of my arch nemesis, Marsha! And definitely not because of the creepy letters I was sending him. Those had nothing to do with it. It's time for my revenge. Take this! <laughs> Oh, God dang it! It backfired! Damn you, Marsha! As soon as I wake up, I'm gonna kill you! Well, my magic powers aren't yet powerful enough. I guess I'll have to resort to canceling her on Twitter instead. Now that I've finally given the game a real chance, I'm genuinely having a blast with it. I would absolutely recommend that any Animal Crossing fan pick this game up for themselves. If it wasn't like $8,000. Uh, thanks again to the person who sent me my copy like six years ago, by the way. I owe you a beer or perhaps about 150 beers. Again, it's certainly derivative of Animal Crossing and you could even call it a clone or even a ripoff and I wouldn't put it past you. And there's even some downsides when compared directly. For example, you only have one room, which as far as I know, you can never upgrade. So that's a bummer. And while the music certainly isn't bad, there's not nearly as many catchy tunes as in an Animal Crossing game. And there isn't a new song every hour, which is something I've always loved. But there's so many good things about it that it makes up for all that in my opinion. Like how it heavily leans into the weirdness. Not only is there the magic and weird characters that I mentioned, even things like the bugs and fish are abnormal. Instead of sea bass, you might find yourself catching a leviathan spawn. If I keep fishing long enough, maybe I'll catch one that's fully grown. <laughs> Or perhaps a canned tuna, which I thought was garbage at first, but no, apparently 
Literally, it's an actual living, breathing fish made entirely out of cans of tuna. You can date other villagers in the game, which I always thought would be fun. Or at least I'm pretty sure you can. Magical Girl Peevington hasn't had that much luck in the boy department yet, so it's hard to say. But my favorite feature of the game is something called Mystery Time. It's a little complicated, but essentially there's a big list of mysteries or quests that need solving. The Sun Principal guy gives you a key, which you use to go through this big door, which initiates Mystery Time. Things in the world change for the rest of the day, which you can take advantage of, and then on the next day, some sort of character will show up and the mystery solving portion begins. It took a little while for Peepington to figure out exactly how it works, because again, she's not the brightest cookie in the box. Is that a saying? It is now. Needs a little mayonnaise. But through some trial and error, she eventually managed to solve a couple cases. In the first one, I helped this trashy, disgusting monster turn into a beautiful, disgusting monster. And she even gave me the blessing of the river, which as far as I can tell, is nothing. Thanks! And then there was this one where this giant guy chases you through town. I know how to put a stop to this. Fart magic! Take that! Oh god, he's immune! He doesn't have a butthole! Seize it! And now, with a little more experience under her belt, Magical Girl Peepington is finally becoming a true witch. Hey. I didn't want to have to go here, but playing Magician's Quest kind of reminded me how much fun it is to move into a town that's already established with shops that are already open and a room you can already start moving things into and villagers that already live there and you don't just live in a tent and it takes a real life week to get through hearing the same song over and over and over? I mean, I'm not pointing fingers or anything. But enough of all that, I know you're all wondering what became of Magical Girl Peepington. After solving her first mysteries, she continued her rise as a powerful witch. She began to ace every class she attended, impressing both her peers as well as the professors themselves. She even began to calm her hyperactivity. Well, a little bit. <laughs> At first, her rapid rise in competence appeared to be due to her newfound dedication to her studies, but alas, there was something much more sinister afoot. After purchasing the seemingly innocent grandma mask, she began to hear a voice inside of her head. A voice that compelled her to collect many disgusting ingredients, such as human bones and very weird-looking fish. She eventually was granted the title Evil Wizard by the school headmaster. It even comes with this hat! Cool! She's evil! Yay! But eventually, the students began to grow suspicious, even spreading rumors that she was possessed by some malicious spirit. Those students began to disappear, one by one. For they were correct in their assumption. The mask was possessed by an evil once defeated many years ago. The evil Dark Lord. Grandma. The Dark Lord's grandma eventually gained near full control of Magical Girl Peepington. <laughs> but one more special ingredient was needed. The soul of one young female academy student. Luckily, Magical Girl Peepington had the perfect candidate. The one who least suspected her betrayal. <laughs> As a reward for her unquestioned loyalty. I'm not sure if she actually even knew what was going on, but uh, you know, whatever. The Dark Lord's grandma granted Magical Girl Peepington one final wish before her body and soul became solely hers. And she used that wish on revenge. Wingardium! Alien murder! Very few real-life kids were blown up in the making of this video. Hey.